Doing a race for charity can add a little bit of extra oomph to your event. Watch on to find out how. Hey, how's it going? I'm Will from Iron Will Multisport Australia, your place to find tips, tricks and experience in triathlon, multisport and endurance events and training. Today, I ran the Sydney Morning Herald half marathon and I ran it for charity. And it was so much fun. Back in 2014, I found out about doing races for charity and I haven't been able to stop myself since. So why should you race for charity? Running for charity allows you to use something that you're good at, which is your race, and use that to help others. You'll still quite often get the same medal, sometimes you might even get a special charity medal at the end of the race, but you'll know that you have leveraged that race to help others. And whether that's through monetary methods or just simply promoting the charity. Either way, it's an awesome thing that you're doing. So one hard thing is, how do you pick a charity? There's so many of them. In the beginning, my selection was somewhat random. But now I'm trying to pick charities that mean something to me, something personal to me, and maybe has affected me in some way. That way I can reach out more from the heart, from my real feelings. Every charity is a worthwhile charity, so there's so many to choose from. You have to make some sort of distinction between them as to which one means more to you at a certain time. Back a few years ago, people that were close to me were affected by cancer. So I ran for Australian Cancer Research Foundation who does research into all sorts of cancer, funding research opportunities and research machinery. And then recently I've had people, especially in my family, affected by dementia. So I ran for Neuro, which is Neuroscience Research Australia, who does research into the prevention and cure of disease and disability of the brain and nervous system. So how do you support charities through races? Well, there are plenty of ways. One way, of course, is to just support someone else's race for a charity. So whether that's uh, by giving them a donation or actually promoting their fundraising page or just promoting their charity. Or maybe you can go watch as a spectator at that event and support that person who is raising money or promotion of that charity. It's always nice to have a friendly face at an event. Another way is to do the event as per just a normal standard entry and either fundraise or promote the charity via your race. By doing this you can support pretty much any charity that you want and you have no minimum amount that you need to raise, there's nothing that you need to actually do. You can just do it on your own terms and raise money or promote that charity throughout your race. And if the race is a race that specifically supports charity entries, then they might even, when you're signing up, have a donation page which they can provide you for specific charities and then you can use that page to gather funds online. This is typically through websites such as Everyday Hero, that sort of thing. The next step up from there is to run as a, what's called here, a charity superstar position. So quite a lot of runs and races here in Australia allow you to sign up for a charity superstar spot which is where you get potentially free entry, but you have to commit to raising at least $1,000 for charity. This is what I typically go through, and what I'll do is I will donate what my entry fee would have been to that charity to start off my donation page. And what do you get from this? Well, apart from the obvious benefit of being able to help other people, quite often the charity will give you a welcome pack of maybe a singlet or a cap or visor or something that you can wear during the race to help promote the charity. You also get given a fundraising page so you can have somewhere online that you can gather funds. And also sometimes there is, uh, the charity will give you maybe a guided tour of their charity facilities and maybe at the end of the race they might also have a barbecue or something like that that you can join in. So it really also gives you a great sense of community when you're signing up for a charity as well. You're there with the charity, you're all one big family, and you're all helping each other. Quite often for my charity superstar entries, I try to take it one step even higher and run in costume. So what are the benefits of running in costume? One of the great benefits of being in costume is that you can bring a smile to other people's faces, you can brighten up other people's days, and people just generally have more fun around people in costume. You know, you get more high fives, you get people yelling things out at you in support of you. It's just so much fun. Because of course, the more people that know about a charity, 
the more potential donations that charity will get. In 2014, I ran the Sydney City Surf in support of the St Vincent de Paul Society, just a somewhat random charity that I chose at random, dressed as The Flash. Also, just a somewhat random costume that I thought was appropriate for a run. In 2017, I ran the Sydney City to Surf again, but this time I ran it in support of Australian Cancer Research Foundation in memory to my Kung Fu Sifu, who unfortunately had passed away earlier that year from mantle cell lymphoma. And to remember him, I ran in a single person lion dance costume. So the sort of lion dance costume you see at Chinese New Year, a single person version of that. And I've got to say, seeing through the mouth of the lion dance costume, the mouth flaps open and closed. So every second step, I couldn't see anything at all. But this event was great. It's the most I've ever raised to date. I think I raised about $5,000 for Australian Cancer Research Foundation through this event, through the massive generosity of so many people around me in my community. Also in 2017, I ran the Blackmore's full marathon and I ran that, setting the Guinness World Record for the fastest marathon run in a Kung Fu uniform. So this was also in support of Australian Cancer Research Foundation and also in memory to my Kung Fu Sifu who had passed away earlier that year. And this is a great example of how running in a costume doesn't have to stop you from achieving goals. So when I ran the marathon in the Kung Fu uniform, I actually set a personal best for marathon time. So I think it was 3 hours, 50 minutes and 38 seconds. Now since that event, my Guinness World Record title has been broken by someone in England. So, later on this year, I will be attempting to set that Guinness World Record title again with a faster time. In 2018, also at the Sydney City to Surf again, I ran in support of Australian Cancer Research Foundation again also in the same costume and also in memory to my Kung Fu Sifu. In 2019, so this year and today, I ran in the Sydney Morning Herald Half Marathon. This time I ran in support of Neuroscience Research Australia. As I mentioned before, they do research into uh, the prevention and cure of disease and disability of the brain and nervous system. And this was run in memory to my grandparents who have had dementia, so my nana on my dad's side and my grandmother on my mum's side. And I also ran this one in a costume. I ran as Forrest Gump to help support Neura, as they also do research into uh, developmental disorders such as autism, Asperger's, that sort of thing. I'm all ready. This beard is not going to be fun to run in, but that's fine. I'll survive. Just got to get myself to the green start group now. And then we're going in five minutes. So in the last few years I've been doing quite a lot of races for charity and one thing I've learned is that sometimes you actually need to take a little bit of a break from charities. If you do race after race after race, raising money for charity, especially consecutive years and especially the same races, then you will start seeing your donations decline year by year. Especially this year running for Neuret in the Sydney Morning Herald Half Marathon, I did quite struggle to reach my fundraising goal of $1,000. To get there, especially in this last week, I just had to pump out content after content and post after post asking for donations and promoting the charity. But I did get there eventually. So it can be worthwhile every couple of years, maybe taking a break from those larger targets. Bring your goals down a little bit, maybe just 
raise money but have no specific target. So don't go into the charity superstar spots where you have to commit to raise a thousand dollars. Maybe use the alternative years to support other people in their charity runs or charity races. Or maybe even just do the race in promotion of the charity. For me for the rest of this year and probably next year as well, I'll give it a bit of a miss on the thousand dollar fundraising targets and maybe just promote the charities through costume and lower just general fundraising. And then in a couple of years I might become a charity superstar again and commit to that thousand dollars or more of fundraising. Have you ever done a race for charity? Let us know in the comments section down below. Thanks for watching. If you want triathlon content every week from here in Australia, then hit that like and subscribe button and I will see you in the next one. Cheerio.